That might be a pick on like, what you like to do in your spare time? Journal? Yeah. <laughs> I know she's gonna be like, journal. <laughs> yeah. When you give me your number, I write it in there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yo, we, 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 we outside. Like, write your number down in my journal. Oh, hold on. I pull out the back pocket. She's like, what the? They yeah. got a little notepad and shit. Yeah, baby, I went to, I went to therapy too. <laughs> yo, like that's Yeah, we were gonna f around have phone sex. She was like, tell me it's something else good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm emotionally intelligent. Oh, my God. <laughs> this nigga crazy. <laughs> what else? I got boundaries. Oh, my God. <laughs> right, boy. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, boy. I swear to oh, God. Man. Boy. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> she was like, oh, my God. You crazy, I'm man. I'm trying to tell you. It's lit, boy. You, like, you, hey, I know you use it, bro. You an R&B nigga, bro. Y'all oh, niggas ain't slick, bro. Y'all yeah. niggas ain't slick, bro. <laughs> Like, y'all come here with all this smooth talking. <laughs> Nigga will take your. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill. J Hill Podcast. We in the building. Mm -hmm. Special guest to my left, man. Come on, man. How do we say this? I don't know how to say it. So it's all the way from. Mississippi by way of LA. Yep, that's right. Am I saying it right? Yeah, you're right. You're right. T.A. Thomas is in the building. What up, brother? What's up, man? Oh, Appreciate man, you for having me, brother. Already, man. Yep. So, um, interesting story. Well, not really interesting. I feel like when I when I when I was doing my research on you, you give me like a uh -oh. old school yeah. singer. I'm trying to choose my words carefully because I don't want to be disrespectful. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah, come on. Come but on. what's the word like? You know how some people be like, I'm just your average um, yeah, yeah. person. I feel like when, when I was researching you, it was like, oh, this give me like the average singer, like old school singer story, like come from a church. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. That that old school um, yeah. influences. Uh, yeah. Not what you see today. 100%. But yeah. like when we came up, the yeah, artists yeah, yeah, that yeah. that we were here, like yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what it give me, man. Nah, 100%, bro. You know, from the, from the Bible Belt. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Your traditional R&B story. Exactly. In church. I'm a PK it. too. So yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like your Joe, your Tank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you tap. You tap. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, no. Nah, that's yeah. what's up, man. So yeah. when did you, I guess, tap into R&B specifically? Man, they're crazy. I tapped into R&B, bro. Really feeling a little R&B when I got to college. Okay. That's when you first started dating? First started dating, yeah, yeah. first relationship and mm -hmm. shit. But like being from Mississippi, like I was raised on a lot of blues mm -hmm. and like gospel and uh, this this niche genre we got called Southern Soul. Mm -hmm. So like I was listening to a lot of local artists, but when I got to college, that's when it started like opening my horizon to other music. I'm like, damn, like the people that I like now, they're my idols. That Like I started learning about Branded Tank, Joe, that was all in college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you say Southern Soul, we talking what, um, Isaac Hayes? We, we we talking like it's it's really people that's local to Mississippi, dog. Yeah, okay. it's like our local like our local stars like TK So, like Vic Allen, like Sir Charles. These like really little niche. It's a niche genre of music in Mississippi. So yeah. wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Because you been getting a lot of buzz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they move. You move to LA and you turn superstar. That's Come what on, I, that's what everybody say. Nah, Have nah. Have you made nah. any songs <laughs> with any of those people? Nah, I haven't, bro. No, I haven't. I haven't. That, but that's the goal right now. I'm I'm, I'm doing this. I'm working on something right now, and I'm like, I'm back out here down south a lot. Mm. Yeah. Yo, I, I wanted to talk to you about a few things, but oh, I don't, I'm on. trying to, I'm trying to, I don't know where I want to go first. Yeah. <laughs> first thing is, um, yeah. I listen to your music. Yeah. And it gives again old school. You know, like these kids, I don't think the kids listen to that. That's some shit I like. I'm like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. I like. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. People tease me about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like. These kids ain't listening. They don't even know how. They don't even understand this right now. Yeah, I feel it. I Do you feel, feel it? Like, I feel like, man, you want to know what's crazy? I got a little cousin, dog. She in seventh, eighth grade, and uh, I seen her recently. And I'm like, yo, what the? What you listen to? She like, nigga, this jacket is. Mm. I'm like, hold on, player. Okay. Like, what you know about jacket is? Okay. So you know what I'm saying? I feel like the kids are starting to like really tap back into that stuff because of TikTok. And you know what I'm facts, saying? Facts, yeah. Facts, facts, so they facts, started, facts, you know, facts. they got the, they cut them little clips down and they remixed the shit. But the kids are starting to dive back into a lot of this like vulnerable R&B. I can see that. And a lot of these old school artists are getting 
like their respect because of these new social media platforms Facts. and remixes and everything. Yep, yep, so you're yeah. right, you're right, you're right. Yeah. I guess I, I guess I'm not really talking about the kids though. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like 28 years old, 28 year olds. Yeah. Like, you want to keep listening to this shoot 'em up bank, but I don't want to hear this. Like I don't want to yeah, hear okay. that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I don't want to. What's your favorite R and B project? My favorite to this date, bro. Uh, Division, September the fifth. Division. DVSN, that was a great project, bro. His first project. DVSN. That's your favorite R&B project? My, one of my favorite R&B projects. I ain't lying to you. I can name you every song off the album. I might be sleeping. Yeah, DVSN, September the 5th album. Damn, when okay. When he first came out, that had us on N, 2, D. Don't wanna. Yeah. But wait, how do you, like 30? No, I'm 29. 29, 29, yeah. okay. All right, okay. I'm like, man. <laughs> That's pretty good. You know yeah. what I was listening to earlier? What's that? Um... I don't know if you if you ever heard or listened to this, but the weekend, yeah, Echoes of Silence, yeah. House of Balloons, and Thursday that had to be probably the best. Like, but you want to know it's crazy? Three projects ever. You, you know it's crazy, bro. I only know one song by Weekend. What song is that? Uh, the Fifty Shades. Fifty Shades, the great record. Yeah. Oh my God. I got. I got to keep it real. I heard we can't. We can't. I heard we can't lie on your. Nah, 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 nah. Gotta nah. keep it real. I'm gonna be real. Yeah. Really, bro. Yeah. Tap into. Well, now you can get it on. Um, like Apple Music called Trilogy. Yeah. I thought that was dope, and I was gonna ask you this. When you make such good music, right? Yeah. So let me explain first. The weekend, right? He came up yeah. with House of Balloons, Echoes of Silence, Thursday. Mm. In my opinion, in my opinion, probably the best trilogy that I've ever heard in my lifetime. Yeah. Right. That probably. I don't know if y'all listen to the weekend trilogy ever. Really good. Yeah. Super good. And That's he had um, redid him, mm -hmm. and he made it one project called Trilogy, mm -hmm. which is on Apple Music now. Mm. And I got a friend that sang. I be telling him, like, bro, nobody know you. Like, he make good music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, bro, you ain't got to keep making no new music. Just remake the old music. Just redo it. Remaster it. Remix yeah. it. And Because it's still I good. Gotcha. I see what you're saying. And I was yeah, wondering, yeah. like, when... when Having yeah. the success you have yeah. had and things like that, do you ever think about going back and remaking some of your old songs? Man, I had to be real with you. I just released my first project, bro, less than a year and a half, like mm. a year and like a month ago. But but to that perspective- That was the two lifestyle thing. Uh, called Between Two yeah, Worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, you know what I'm saying? Probably like a couple of years, you know, I you know, get a little older. I definitely wouldn't mind coming back, remastering, mm. you know what I'm saying? Giving that project a second win. Yeah, that would be good. That, that project, what exactly were you- Caught between was it? Cause listening, I don't know if it was a girl, yeah, or like like life and it it was really was all of that. It okay. really was all of that, but it was really sparked by this relationship that was like you know was pulling me between music, yeah, you know what I love and trying to love her. You know what I'm saying? It's funny because that relationship did you bad, but did you so well, right? You know what I'm saying? Got you in therapy. You know what I'm saying? Got you. You know what I'm saying? Like type shit. Yeah, like one one thing about relationships, bro. When it's like <laughs> about men, yeah, like you get out of a relationship, you get to turn it up, uh, get to work it out. You going to therapy, you oh, get what I'm saying? Man, like, pack you, on you, know, you come out being your best self. <laughs> nah, you said you had you end up calling girls, telling them you apologize. Yeah, because I wrote the project, and it wasn't just really centered around one shotty. Mm. I wrote that project because it like my first relationship, even mm. being in college. You know, it was like a collective of situations I had been in. But all of them have all been a mystery to the music. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because music, I was so focused, like so driven, you know, in the art that, you know, anything after that was coming second. You say it like you a superstar already, though. But like, God, you got some, you save them apologies. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they, don't, they don't need them the apologies just yet. All right, babe, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you, need to, you need to save. I was watching, uh, I don't, you watch yeah. sports? Yeah. I was watching uh, uh, Nightcap with um, Ocho and. Uh, and um, Sha um, Shay Shay, yeah, Shannon Sharp, I'm tripping. Yeah, and he was like, "Yo, no, it wasn't. It was actually ESPN, right?" And he was talking to um, we be talking about Baker Mayfield making a statement about um coming to Tampa Bay and and, and having fun, yeah. right? Because he want they wanted him to restore the fun. Yeah, and Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith was both saying like, "Man, that's coming from somebody who don't understand being a winner." Yeah, and I'm gonna get to the point. The point is, when you're a winner. You don't have time for nothing else but winning. Come and on, sometimes dog. that takes away from family time. Sometimes that takes away from things that are important. So a lot of times when you see these Hall of Fame people or guys that made it to the Hall of Fame in their speech, they apologizing to their family because all, all the nights they wasn't there. 
So I'm joking, but I'm serious. It's like, man, you apologizing now, and it's like, this just the beginning. This just the beginning. Like, you have no idea. Like, yeah, that's maybe. Sexy. That's that real. was good though. Come yeah, from therapy, yeah. you could apologize. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody deserves an apology. Like, ain't no hey, bro. that's real, dog. That's real. Mm. I actually think about that shit way too often, For real? especially as it relates to the family aspect. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Nieces and nephews getting older, missing the games. They're getting a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And I find myself like, like, damn. Bro, you're 29. Why do you think about all that right now? Oh, bro. It's just I'm a family dude. I'm from the South. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Family was family was drilling us. And also, my family, uh, which is like kind of small, we also lost a lot of people too. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because even that was interesting. You was like, um, what motivates you was your nieces and nephews. Yeah, dog. Like, what? This guy is you were 29. Like, you yeah. barely even... <laughs> like, <laughs> You still young, like yeah, man. it sounds like so much. You, it sounds like you put so much pressure on yourself. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it pressure. Uh, I feel like I had a lot of life to have me young. Mm. I grew up real, like real fast. You know what I'm saying? Uh, from experiencing like very close loss at like nigga, like nineteen, twenty. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was just talking about this in the car. Uh, I remember the morning I woke up, told my sisters that they're father had passed mm. you know what i'm saying i lost a best friend you know what i'm saying i lost a nephew then in turn of lo- losing my mom mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so these things kind of made me a little bit more intentional about life mm. you know what i'm saying because time seemed like a thing that was like yo like you can wake up in the morning this should be a wrap mm. you know what i'm saying yo how does that make you look at i know a lot of people look at covid they joke about it mm. you actually lost somebody some mm. your mother during that time yeah does it make you Think about COVID like differently. I mean, it has to. Well, okay, I didn't. That's I didn't lose her. Uh, I lost her a little bit, like three months before COVID. Okay, and it was due to uh, like kidney failure, so it wasn't uh, necessarily like COVID. But that shit was crazy. Grieving was crazy because it was like I was forced to. Oh no way! You lost her three months before the I shutdown. Lost her in November, and I came back to LA, and it was like, yeah, nigga, sit in the house and deal with it. That's. Cr- Nah, that's insane. It was different, dog. Damn. It was different. So that's where all the therapy, that shit, you know, came late on down the line. But, you know, I actually am appreciative for that shit because I didn't have shit to deflect from. You Mm. know what I'm saying? I kind of had, went back to L.A. and I had to sit with my shit. So wait, hold up, bro. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Because I ain't, we ain't hearing all this. Yeah. You had the girlfriend while your mom's passed? I was, you know what I'm saying? He was outside. You was. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what that means, nigga. You gotta speak up. What it mean? <laughs> I mean, I was in a little situation. You was in a situation. You know what I'm saying? Was y'all serious a little bit? Yes, yeah, serious. Damn. Is this the same chick that you had to, that you broke up with and made you start seeing yourself? Well, you talking about caught between two mm-hmm. worlds? Well, caught between two worlds is about a collective of like relationships throughout my life. Right. Yeah, but yeah. But she, was she, she the last def- one? She yeah, she definitely was a part of that story. Yeah. Y'all still talk? Yeah. Type shit. I asked this because it's like yeah. I think it's funny. I was talking to somebody. We talking about love, right? Yeah. And a lot of people say they love you, mm-hmm. but they don't really love you because they don't even know how to love themselves. Mm-hmm. And I mean that by the the the, the purest of love, right? Mm-hmm. Like love is kind, love don't boast, love like you know what I'm saying, it's graceful yeah. things like that. I think it's Corinthians one thirteen, if I'm not mistaken. Quote the scripture, dog. Yeah, I don't, but not, nah, but yeah, like love from the Bible, what God says love is, Come right? On, man. So it's like we were just talking about how people say they love you, but they really don't know what love is. Mm-hmm. And I, I say all that to say, like, bro, you losing your mom's three months before being locked down. <laughs> yeah. Is no way. You're even mentally capable of being in a space with for somebody else at that moment. So I can see how that look, but I'm only thinking like I'm thinking about they might not even know how to accept that. They might yeah. not know how to be there for you. And 100%. they might be being selfish as they can be, right? Yeah. But being angry or hurt towards you. And it's like, man, that's just misdirected, misdirected hurt between both of y'all. Yeah. And it's like, man, that's just a hard time. Yeah, it's a hard time. I feel like it's just simple as that. A hard time, you know. Mm. I felt I feel like uh, you know, when it comes to grieving, it's just like ain't no manual. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't I wasn't so quick to like figure out how to feel. I just kinda laid in it a little bit. I mm. just had to let it hurt, you know what I'm saying? And uh yeah, shit just but I going back to your point, it was hard. You know what I'm saying? Because I couldn't focus on nothing but my hurt. Mm. Yeah. 
what did it teach you? How 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 did that teach you to move with somebody else dealing with a loss? Bro, it's like you said somebody else is dealing with like the loss of man, listen, that you just gotta let it hurt. I feel like we be so like quick to just like go to sources to like deal with it. You mm. just gotta let it you gotta let that shit hurt. You gotta let it out. You gotta cry. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you just gotta feel you gotta feel that shit. Mm. You know, for a long time I was deflecting how I felt. You know what I'm saying? I ain't had no pictures up. I was scrolling past. You know, I was trying to put it. I'm like, oh, this shit didn't happen. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I had to get to a point where I was actually allowing myself to feel. How do you be there for somebody? Like, if you had to go back, right? Mm. And, I don't know, we had to build a woman or this imaginary mm. perfect woman. Yeah. Or somebody, not even just the woman, it could be a friend. Yeah. To be there for you in that space, in that yeah. time, what would that look like? Just simply being there. Like, uh, you know, letting them know that you're there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you need me, I'm here. You know, because you know, there's a lot of people that was offering me help. And I, I'm just like, you know, I appreciate you offering me help. Like if I need you, I'll reach out. You know what I'm saying? But it really was the it really was knowing that they was there if I you know, if I needed that help. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I feel like you could you could deflect that pain, bro. You can you can let that pain, you can deflect it on other things. I feel like you really gotta sit in it. Mm. And let it hurt, bro. Like, mm. you know, that that's at least that's my way. You know what I'm saying? I had to really sit in that heat of that pain, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like so people just like, oh, just pray God going, you know what I'm saying? Even before I got to like the spiritual visits, all of that stuff, you know, I just had to like be real with myself and be like, no, you just lost your mom. You're hurting. It hurts, bro. Cry, mm. let it out, and we can get to all the rest of the stuff next. Yeah, that's man. Yeah. I can't even imagine. I I'm sorry. Even, yeah, you know, I wasn't even accepting of any other. You know, people was there for me, and I appreciated them for being there because that really did mean a lot to me. I knew that I wasn't alone. Mm. You know, what I'm saying I know I had people I could talk to, but the first step was really just trying to cry. And you were you were already in LA. Yeah, I was already in LA. Oh my god, that's yeah. Insane. I was in, I was in LA like uh, I was in LA at that time for like four years. Yeah, so I really wasn't at home a lot, you know. Yo, I I, I don't mean to make it a thing, but, like, that's crazy. Like, yeah. I've been in Atlanta for three years now. Okay. And, like, you know, it get hard for me just everyday life. Mm -hmm. Like, as long as you lose somebody, you close to you, you don't got no family. Right? Mm. It's crazy, bro. How was how, how you like it being in L.A., bro? Like, being from Mississippi. Like, like you said, Mississippi, mm -hmm. you home, family, family-oriented. Yeah. Like, everything is close-knit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. LA, everybody working. You don't know who wants you for for, for you or your potential. Like everybody swear they somebody. I can get you into this event. It's like it's Hollywood. That's yeah, how it yeah, is. Yeah. How yeah. is that? Man, I like I like LA. Man, I got a mm. dope village out there. Oh, that's you dope. You know what I'm saying? And when I first came to LA, I didn't come by myself. You know, I was in a group. So our situation was kind of set up, and mm. we was uh, you know, so it was like I really didn't have to make friends because I already knew these guys. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, also got some extended family out there. So, you know, I kind of got a village of people out there. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? Outside of people that's not in the industry. That's that's dope, bro. Yeah. I, um, It's funny because I always try to, like, project my energy on other people, right? Yeah. But, like, the good people, they they, they block that <laughs> shit out. I say that because my, my homie, uh, Trav Q, is out there, right? Okay. And I told him the same thing. I'm like, man, I love you, everybody. Everybody, like, uh, Hollywood. They call it Hollywood for a reason. People just faking this and that. Yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah, I don't experience that. I got yeah. my one friend, yeah. and that's all I stay to. So yeah. my experience is great because I'm embracing the people that are there for me. Bro, I literally yeah. say the same shit. You know, a lot of people have a lot of wild experience. You just got to find your village of people, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just got to find your village of people. And most of my people, like I said, my uh, I got like an extended aunt mm -hmm. out there, you know. They, ain't, they don't do nothing in the industry. Cousins out there, yeah. That's smart. That's great. That's 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 dope. Yeah. Yo, wait. You say you came out there with a with a uh, group because yeah. you was in a group. Yeah, I was in a group. But you said y'all had a situation. Like, what, what, what you yeah, mean? we we came. It was already out. set up. Yeah, it was already set up. Like, so we we had actually moved to Atlanta for three months and we had to sign with Sony in New York. And uh, yeah, they was like, yo, y'all want need y'all out in L.A. It was like for real, we finna move. So we moved. We got out there. We already had a spot and everything. Mm, how was that? Like. It was How long crazy. did that last? Like good four or five. Pandemic was like the the whole four or five years. Yeah. Why y'all was signing Sony? Like, well, I mean, what type of motion y'all had? What's going on? You you skipping some things? Let me know what happened. Like, you know what I'm <laughs> I mean, you know, we got together. We did a pub deal with Sony. Well, how did y'all get there? You said, bro, that's not just we got, average. We, that's not nah, regular. 
we got discovered. Like we got we got discovered by these guys at Sony, uh, MBK. You know, they discovered us online. You know, from just like posting videos and shit. Uh, found me online. Went out to New York. Made shit official. Met the other boys. You know what I'm saying. Uh, and at this time, I was at Jackson State, so I was mm -hmm. a junior in high in uh, college. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Uh, met the boys. Uh, I left school. I was like, yo, I'm dipping. Told my pops, he paying my way. I'm like, bro, I'm dipping. Like, I, I, I got this opportunity. I'm going to leave. And uh, once they kind of knew that it was real, they supported me. Uh, came out to Atlanta, thought this was going to be home. You know what I'm saying? And then we inked and we moved to L.A. Damn, bro, that's dip. You are like an old school R&B. That's how they, <laughs> and that's how they felt Mary J. Blige. Like, he came in the living room. Like, she could sing to me. You sing? All right, baby, we're going to sign. You're yeah. like, what the hell? What, yeah, what were y'all doing online? Uh, you know, just posting videos, bro. This is during the time. This is like this. This is doing your musically time. It's okay. like your musically. You still got at this time. You still got what is it? Vine. Mm -hmm. You still got you know social media was as it relates to the videos. The shit was like Vine was like going crazy and musically. You know, so yeah, just being discovered through posting videos, singing videos. So what happened to the group? You know, pandemic happened. I lost my mom. Uh, I feel like pandemic was hard for you know everybody in the industry, bro. Mm. It was a moment we kind of sat back it, after four or five years and be like, "All right, what's really going on, dog?" And uh, to be real with you, after that loss, I feel like I had a different story to tell. Mm. Yeah. How, so what was the music with the group? Like it was R and B. It was R and B. Yeah. No, I'm saying like you said I had a different story to tell. Yeah. What was the story you was telling with the group that you feel like y'all was telling? I felt like we was telling the story of a uh, uh, five five dudes out in L. A. Living life, mm. you know what I'm saying? As young guys, just like out, you know, we outside, we okay. having fun. We turned up, we on tour. And uh, yeah, just telling a couple of our little experiences in love and shit. But mm. it was collectively telling that story. So how would you describe the story that you're telling now? Yeah, it's more specific to me. You know, this story ain't being told from nobody's perspective, but my personal experience. And what's that though? Like you if know, you had to sum it up. You know, it's it's being caught between two worlds, you know what I'm saying? That project, you know, it's the record risky I got out, you know, it's it's really just like my personal love story. Mm. You my know, it's funny, when I first heard of Caught Between Two Worlds, at mm. first, I they never you should never judge a book by its cover, but the, me like reading, doing like reading research before I was watching the videos, I automatically assumed that it might have been like caught between like two worlds of like gospel or like Mm. God and like wor worldly things, mm. and then when I found out it was about like woman, I was like, "Hmm, do you ever feel like that's actually kind of hard?" Though. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. Have you ever felt that's like you've been caught hard, between though. those caught two between worlds? Between two worlds, like a gospel and R and B, bro, that shit hard. Mm. Though. Yeah, because like you yeah. came from a church background. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So a lot of things you were privy to. A lot of things mm. you know when mm. it comes to what we should do, what we shouldn't do. And I was wondering, do you ever like have that conflict in your mind as well, bro? To be real with you, when I was uh, when I was at home and my folks discovered that like I was listening to blues, like my folks never made me feel like it was like a bad thing. Like my mom actually supported me listening to like the stuff I was listening to. Because keep in mind, it's like Ray Charles, Sam mm -hmm. Cooke, these guys I named you that's local to home, so. The music is real tasteful. It ain't like no vulgar talking and shit. They're just like, yeah, he liked them. You know, they supported me in that. Mm. So I probably dealt with more judgment from the church in itself. Like, dang, why you don't want to do gospel? Versus like when my parents were like, you know, my mom being a pastor, when she supported that, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm Gucci. Wow. But I, I, like I said, I, I definitely dealt with a bunch of controversy from like church folks. Did that make you like want to kind of like venture off from the church at all? Uh, it definitely made me take a break from church. Mm -hmm. I tell you that I had to go, I had to go find God like in a more personal way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Go on my own self discovery with God. You know, deal with a couple of things in life. You know what I'm saying? And and kind of find Him in my own way. Mm -hmm. But that situation, going back to your question, that situation in itself kind of drove me away from church, folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you? Do you still feel like you you feel that way now, or you grew out of it? Yeah, I, you know, I'm not really. I, yeah, I'm, I'm in, I'm in church. Like, I, I, I go to church. I, to be real, like, I go to uh, online service. You know, what I'm saying I do that. But like, the whole traditional narrative of church, I, I married that so long ago. Religion, all of that. Mm. Yeah. What you think the um? What's the the thing that drive your way the most when it comes to church, religion? 
people all that. What do you think it is? It's literally, dog, I feel like the people, like I feel like people have made God, Jesus be somebody that he isn't. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like we really downplay that scripture, prayer without work is dead. You know what I'm saying? It's like, why would God bless you with this miracle you ain't working for? Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I feel like life is really spiritual. You know what I'm saying? We're given free will. You know what I'm saying? You got to work hard. You got to work hard and you got to align that with good faith. You know what I'm saying? You got to be tapped into the spirit. You know what I'm saying? And that really wasn't taught. Mm. It really was, you got to pay your tithe, got to pay your offering, can't do this. You know what I'm saying? You need to repent. That's a sin, 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 sin. You know what I'm saying? That's really all my upbringing was, you know. So I had to unmarry a lot of that and really get to know God on my own. No, I actually had to experience the spirit on my own, you know. No, I feel you. I think the thing that um, draws me away, um, I don't want to say drive away, it sounds so bad, but like, make me skeptical is, and this might sound crazy, but I think if I had to sum it up, it would be freedom. It's my, mm. my first time ever even thinking of it like that. And what I mean by that is like, I'm trying to be careful, but fuck it, I'm going to just say it. <laughs> nah, let's not be careful. Let go there. I feel like, um, they say like, what's the price of freedom? Yeah. And like, really, it's your life. Yeah, true. And I think, um, it's like so many things happen bad in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying not to sound like Kanye West up this motherfucker. <laughs> but, like, I'm just saying, like, if you think about it, like, I'm not trying to overthink it, but think about it, bro. So many bad things happen though, yeah. in the world is because we can do it. Because yeah. we're free to do whatever we want. 100%. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be free. I'm not Going saying back that. To that free will, but it's bro. like, yeah. that's the price of freedom is to yeah. be able to do whatever you want and take yeah. a life if you want yeah. to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm, I correlate that to what I'm saying about the church. It's like, what that is, is so many different denominations, religions. It's so many different practices. It's so many different opinions. It's so many different mm. beliefs. You get what I'm trying to say? Mm. And even when it comes to the word, the word is the word. The Bible is the Bible. We can read it from front yeah. to back. But it's so many ways to break it down. And it's like, yo, I just want to make it to heaven. God damn. Facts. But it's like when you hear so many people breaking it down and some of them make sense. You might have three of them that make sense. <laughs> like, where, where do I go? Yeah. I think that itself yeah. kind of like just made me like uneasy. I don't yeah. want to say draw me away. It just made me uneasy because like, man, it. I don't want to make the wrong decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's tough, boy. Mm, yeah, I, I feel you. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. We, bro, this this so crazy. On the way over here, we literally had a conversation in a car talking about somewhat similar, the same thing, mm. just unmarried religion mm. and all the rules and shit that come with that. Yeah, but even that is like, yeah, I don't know. It's like part of me feel like. I'm going to just go strictly, like, super, super duper hard and Bible focus. I'm, yeah, like, we're scripture focused that yeah. at the end of the day, I feel like, I said this, I just said this in a child, like, CC interview. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, if I get to the end and I'm wrong, I was going to die anyway. But if I get to the end and I was right, I'm happy I, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm happy I did go that way because I'm going to heaven. That's how I feel. But <laughs> it's just, man, it's, this, this is a different conversation. No, nah, facts. <laughs> but you know, hey, man, you got to tap into that spirit, man. You got to tap into the spirit. What's some uh, things you did to tap into the spirit when you say the spirit? Man, meditating, dog. Mm. Meditating. Just being able to shut the fuck up and sit silent and just like tap in. Mm. Yeah. That sound like something like, uh, I was talking to Mario, and I think he said he's into Mario like... Mario be tapped. Yeah, Mystic. What is it called? Mystic. It's, it's, it's always an ism out mystic, here. Mystic, it's something. Yeah. I don't know if you all heard about it. What is it called? Mystic. Mysticism or something like that. But it's basically like like meditation. Okay. Um. Yeah, he big on meditating and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, um, do you like any of the new artists now? Uh, yeah, man. I got a couple of them. Leon Thomas, Hard. Uh, Put me on game. Yeah, Leon Thomas, uh, Hamza, artist from the UK. Uh, who else? A couple of new ones. Uh, Jazz Karras, Fire. Uh, it's a couple. It's a couple of them out there. I just discovered this art artist named McGee recently. Mm. M K dot G E E hard. Uh, yeah, man. That's a bunch of artists I had. I got to tap in myself. Yeah, you made man. me feel like an idiot. I, I, had to, I had to go on a deep dive though. Okay. Yeah, deep dive. And then some of these people are my friends. 
Yeah. That makes sense. All right, man. Yeah, you ain't yeah. we fooling, man. You talking yeah. about your friends and shit. Ain't no yeah. more, <laughs> what, uh, my people on, man. How are you liking um how is the reception of people to your music, you think? Bro, it's been dope. Really? Yeah, it's been dope. Like mm. a lot of people been connecting to those stories. You know what I'm saying? Uh a lot of men too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That was a very vulnerable body work that I put out. I only ask that because I feel yeah. like you know how they've been saying over the past what five five years, maybe mm. four four years, they've been saying R and B is dead. Yeah. Right? And like Again, I feel like R&B has changed. Yeah. But when I hear your R&B, it's not the R&B of, like, today. Yeah. Or that I, like, we would... Like, traditional. Think, yeah, yeah, traditional. Yeah. So I'm thinking, like, it might be even harder to gain mm-hmm. an audience. But you you don't, you don't feel that way. Man, I feel like, you know, I'm down for the slow burn, too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I put out my project last year, uh, I kind of watch now... And it's like now like a, a little bit over like a year and a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And people are still discovering this project because it's so good as if I dropped it yesterday. Mm. And, you know, streaming data instead is like reflecting that. So I, I'm no, I'm noticing that like if you just pull out real authentic, true body of work, that shit going to reach. Oh, hold up, bro. You ain't 29, bro. You sound like you 40 something. <laughs> Not because I say that. It's like, bro, you really giving like old, this is old school grind, old school music like yeah. uh uh like who was the the newest person that probably was like old school like um like, Mooney uh, Long Mooney Long Lucky like, Day type. yeah like yeah. this is it's given that because like even she was a slow burn the fact that you exactly the fact that you like still promoting this project yeah man these new niggas have been they would have dropped three more projects in a year yeah man. <laughs> like so you still promoting this one project yeah I got two I got two new singles out uh, Risky and Angry I released them like probably like uh one like a month ago and the other one two months ago but yeah. That project, I've still been still been pushing it. Are about. you signed now? Yeah. Who are you signed to? I'm with Def Jam. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I just signed like recently. Congratulations. Appreciate it, bro. Are you so you you like the late you you like in the label thing? Yeah, well, I come from distribution. So I come from being independent. That first project, you know, I own the masters to that. Mm. Uh and then, you know, got discovered off that project uh to as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, went over to Def Jam recently. Damn. Yeah. That's dope, bro. Yeah. Are you like what's 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 the vibe at Def Jam right now? Uh, R&B. You know, you got money over there. Uh, got Coco. Mm. My homie Zay France. Uh, shit, me. You know Did, are they giving you, like, support when it comes to, like, getting artists like that on? Or is yeah. it... Because I know yeah. sometimes you get signed and it's still, like, an independent thing, but you sign. Yeah. But you still got to, like, they want to... Once you do your own thing, kind of. But they yeah, give you full I, support. I came in, once again, out the strength of my music. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So... The reason why I love Def Jam because they let me do my thing. You know okay. What I'm they trust they trust the TA that they discovered. Okay, that you makes know sense. What I'm saying so I'm still able to tell these stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah, that's hard, man. Now you know it's it's like a, a fight. I don't want to say fight, but yeah, a lot of people saying they love the independent route, yeah. but then you still got people saying my guy on BPZ say as as he would say that the the NBA the NFL yeah. basically the major leagues yeah like being signed to a major. Yeah. So you like I kind of feel like it's, it kind of will work for you in timing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I knew that my first project, uh, I was like, I don't need to be with a label right now. They ain't not gonna even give me what I want. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I need to build. I need to build towards that deal. So I know I had to put out some first, like independent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I need to find a good distribution partner. So Platoon, Apple, it was just like the perfect pair. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, what would you name this? Um, time in your life like if you had to give it a name or a title man if I had to give this 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 era in life it would be it would be <laughs> it sounds so typical to hustle to grind because I feel like I'm still just getting dirty right now I'm mm. still I'm still I'm still moving this dope man mm. yeah I feel like what's for so many artists out there who want to be signed they'd be looking at you like what you signed you made it yeah how nah, can you still feel like, like that at the, at the like being signed? That's the first error that artists make when they sign. They feel like, you know, it's all in the label hands. Mm. But truth to the matter is you got to work now harder and make them up because you got a, you now on a, a roster where you got artists that are, like, turning up. Mm. Now you got to fucking put that work in and be like, yo, what's up? Nah, still thanks. going crazy. 100%. Yeah. I was talking to somebody, uh, Sadie Hendrix, actually, um, mm. and I was telling them how we was, well, we was talking about how the middle – is the hardest part, right? Because mm-hmm. the bottom, you really don't know nothing. You green, yeah. ignorant to things. You just fighting. The middle, you know what it feels like to be on the bottom, yeah. and you see who's on the top. So it's like <laughs> that's be the hardest position to be in. Yeah. Because like I'm not going back. I'm not going back. Nah, 
But everybody that's down looking at me like I made it and like, y'all have no clue. Like, yeah. I'm still broke right now. <laughs> I just got a couple followers. Like, you have no clue. Like, the middle yeah. is the hardest part, bro. Yeah, bro. The middle is the grind, dog. You got to mm. be a dog in the middle. Nah, facts, I'm bro. I'm a motherfucking pit bull right now in the middle, dog. No. <laughs> nah, I'm with you. You got to be a pit in the middle. And, and then it's like, it'd be hard to like, for me, I feel like it'd be hard because now, again, you know a little something. So every time you know something, you should get a smell in yourself a little bit. Whereas mm -hmm. though, when I ain't, before I had all this shit, yeah. I was DMing niggas a million times. I'm on wax, I'm on camera saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have no ego. That's how I got all of my guests. I DM them a million times. Now people know me. Yeah. I don't, I'm not DMing y'all niggas a million times. That's how I feel. Yeah. But I think back, like, bro, that's how I got here. I should be doing the same thing. But it's like, I got pride now. Like, nah, y'all know who I am. I'm not about to keep DMing you. Like, you ain't about to be talking to me about your homies. Yeah, and yeah. I just look at it like, it's, it's tricky because that's yeah. a real feeling. Like, yeah, yeah. but when I was when I was a nobody, I didn't see people. I didn't see the DMC scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, yeah, I'm going to hit you a million times. Yeah. Now I see a say scene, I'm like, you think I'm a bitch? Fuck yeah. out of here. <laughs> it's different. I'm like. It's different. I feel that. He just mind fucking you. <laughs> I mean, bro, going back to my first project, dog, I ain't going to hold you. Like, I wanted to work with writers that was putting out shit that I was like, I'm like, yo, they putting out the work that I like. Mm. And I work with a lot of, I work with a super producer, Camper, mm. at the time they had did ICU for Coco mm -hmm. and Cadence and Sage. Like, these people was doing, like, crazy work. And I ain't had, I had no music out. You know what I'm saying? But the power to DM. I'm just like, fuck it. Mm -hmm. Losing my pride. I'm like, hey, I really want to work with you. Hey, I really want And right now, I'm still doing the same shit, bro. Nah, no, man. I'm still jumping in the DM. Like, I'm just like, hey, I lose my pride. Yeah. Uh, you uh, actually got a you got a Grammy over you nominated. I was nominated. Yeah, no, nah, congrats. That was dope, bro. Appreciate it, man. That's fire. Damn, man. Like, you got a lot of motion going on. Yeah, trying to move it, man. Got to move that thing around. I saw you say something about um when you write. Yeah. You try to, because you like, you write. To yeah. Write. And, um... You try to write for like the person, where they are. Uh, nah, not really. It's it's like when I write, I journal. Mm -hmm. So that was a tool that I learned through therapy. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, when I write, especially for myself, I'm approaching everything like conversational. But I'm saying when you write for somebody else, when I write for somebody else, mm -hmm. yeah, it's really like, hey, what you feeling? Right. Like what's on your mind? What you trying to? What you kind of get across? And I'm gonna tell you that that thing right there disconnect me from writing a whole lot because a lot of people don't got nothing up there. Mm. They don't know what they want to talk about. So I was talking to an R&B guy, right, that yeah. writes. And I are actually heard the opposite. Mm. And I think the uh, the advice was don't try to write for them. Mm. You write for yourself and then they'll like it. But it kind of goes to what you said because, like, yeah. they don't have nothing up there. Yeah, so because if you don't the, got thing nothing, is, the thing is, whatever it is you write, you got to perform that shit on stage. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, if I tailor a suit for you, you can't really wear that motherfucker. It's like, I'm, you know, you got to provoke an emotion when you're on that stage. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it got to mean something to you. You know, I'm like, what you're going through? Like, what you want to talk about? What you want the people to feel when they hear you? You know what I'm saying? So when I'm writing for somebody, I'm trying to tap into their story. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to carry that record, perform it potentially for the rest of your life. Mm. Yeah. Nah, bro, I know that right, and that's and that's really lucrative too. Yeah, that's the that's the way. That's the bread and butter right there. That's Damn. The, yeah, that's the bag. So, are you still doing it a lot right now, or not? Not too much, you know what I'm saying. But I am like, you know, when people ask me for records, you know, uh, you know, if somebody called me in that I like, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm a, a fan of, or I see some, they got something that I like, I work with them. How many songs you think you got right now that ain't recorded in his journal? Uh, for in you. my journal? Yeah, for you. Oh, uh, shit. In my journal, shit, probably a million three hundred forty four. Well, how big is this journal? And 1,722 and 33. Yeah. <laughs> how big is this journal? <laughs> I'm trying, it's not like a dictionary. Man, it go back to 2019. You, the same journal? Yeah. Bro, you know you got iPhone. You get, get use the notes. I do. I got them, too. Oh, I say, like, why you always just use the... Because when you say journal, I just automatically this big-ass book. But it's different when you write it. It's different when you write. It's different when that pen connect to the paper. It's different from digitally typing it down. It's a mind fuck when that when that pencil. I mean, even even the Bible said, "Write the vision, make it plain." So mm. this manifestation is almost like speaking words out, but doing it on paper. Yeah. You made me want to journal, you, bro. It's it. You gonna unlock some shit. You make that shit sound sexy. Like I need a journal. Like, I'm trying to. Hey, baby, <laughs> hey, shorty, and I'm I'm newly single too. I'm just saying, like, shorty, I journal, girl. Yeah. You talking about, I, I know everybody turn your ass into a 
the pay. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, man. Stop. You was a dirty nigga, bro. Oh, that's... <laughs> Turn you to a page is crazy. I'm trying to tell Yo, you, bro. I'm trying to tell you. These R&B niggas ain't shit, bro. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. Nigga, you better stop playing before I turn you to a page. I don't know if that's sexy or she should be scared. Like, you know God damn. I'm just saying, man. God, this nigga is crazy. But nah, that's, that might be a pick on, like, what you like to do in your spare time? Journal? Yeah. <laughs> I know she's going to be like, journal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you give me your number, I write it in there. Yeah, <laughs> hey, yo, we, 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 we outside. Like, write your number down in my journal. Oh, hold up, I'm on the back pockets. You like what the? <laughs> you got yeah. a notepad and shit. Yeah, baby, I went. To, I went to therapy too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that shit. Yeah, we were fucking around. Had phone sex. She was like, tell me it's something else good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm 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 emotionally intelligent. Oh my god, <laughs> this nigga. <crazy. laughs> what else? I got boundaries. Oh my god, <laughs> right, boy. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, boy. I swear to oh, God, man. boy. Uh uh uh. <laughs> she was like, oh my god, this nigga, you crazy. I'm man. trying to tell you, it's lit, boy. You, not, you, hey, I know you use it, bro. You an R&B nigga, bro. Y'all oh, niggas ain't slick, bro. Y'all hey. niggas ain't slick, bro. <laughs> Like, y'all come here with all this smooth talking shit. <laughs> Nigga will take your bitch, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Man, I, ain't, I ain't looking for no trouble, man. Nah, man. But nah, this is good, bro. I appreciate you. Like, uh, so how long you been A? I'm in the A to Saturday, bro. I'm out here shooting a couple uh videos. And uh, you know, uh, you know, meeting a couple people, working mm. a little bit, recording. Mm. Yeah. You, you, know, you doing some like features and stuff? Yeah, hell yeah. I'm open to features. I'm not doing nothing while I'm here, but I'm open, dog. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, nah, man. Who are some people like you would like to work, work, work with right now? Oh, man. Um, shit. Jasmine Sullivan. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, okay. Jasmine is hard. Uh, um, goddamn Tank. Jasmine Sullivan. I'm sorry. Though. Yeah. Bro, you ain't 29, bro. Cause like, oh, ain't nobody just saying Jasmine Sullivan. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people sleep, man. Jasmine Sullivan and Missy Elliott, bro. They actually was a powerful duo. Wrote a lot of songs that people probably not familiar with. Yeah, I, I know this is probably too commercial for you. Yeah. But I'm sorry, Lions, Tigers, and Bears still probably one of the best bro, songs, bro. Come on, dog. that is, bro. That song, man. She got range. She could sing, bro, and oh, mm, that's good. Uh, of, lion, of, of lions and tigers and bears, bro. Bust your windows out your car. Your, like, I'm in love with another. Bro, I listened to "Bust Your Windows Out the Car" like maybe mm, a year mm. year ago or something, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, oh. But another project that was just so like what she was going through in that moment, dog. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And we can now play that shit years from now. Somebody still, we still connecting with that shit. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, Lions and Tigers and Bears is crazy. I think, well, I, I at one point I used to say I think she was overlooked. Yeah. Oh, no, I can't say that. Nah. Yeah, I can't say that. Because yeah. people that's like singers, yeah, yeah, yeah. respect her. Like yeah. she like your favorite singer, favorite singer, some yeah, type yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nah, man, this is good talking to you, man. Anything good that we missed? Good talking miss? to you, bro. Nah, man, you know, just check out them singles, Risk and Angry, and tap me into Caught Between Two Worlds, you know? Nah, this is good, man. I appreciate you pulling up, man. Appreciate you for having me, dog. No problem. T. Thomas, Mr. J. Hill, J. Hill Podcast is a wrap. We yeah, out. Yeah, I know.